Hello and welcome to the ninth video in the Project Sovereign series. In this video, I'll make the final adjustments to the main hall mesh and freeze the subdivisions. We're taking a big step today, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm about to create this little extrusion right here. And this is a little bit challenging because it actually blends in with this part of the swoop pretty, pretty evenly. You can see right here, it starts beneath the shuttle bay lip and it just blends in nice and smoothly with the side of the secondary hull. So what I need to do is not so much extrude it, but I created a new geometry right here. This is going to be sort of the edge. You'll see when I make this work, or at least try to make this work. So let's see, to select the correct polygons here. And let's see. So just like that. I think this can come up. So it's like this. It should blend in smoothly. I might need to do some adjusting here, but let's see what it looks like. All right, so not bad. Of course, I'll have to tighten up these loops here. And there's a triangle here that I'll need to correct, but that should be pretty easy. But that's pretty much how I'm going to approach that problem. Hopefully, I'll have this all tightened up and I can freeze this mesh into its subdivided state and get to work on the finer details. So it turned out to be a real pain to extrude this piece. So I just decided to build it separately. No use in banging my head against the wall in order to get this done. So this is looking pretty good. Just need a bit more cleanup in this area. I'm not too concerned because it's going to be covered by these pieces right here. Whoop. That I'm just gonna create separately. Maybe even extrude them from the hull, depending on which is easier. But not looking too bad. This is blending in pretty smoothly with the rest of the hull. So a little bit more cleanup here. This has been done, and we're that much closer to having a completed model. Okay, so lots of progress made on the lower back of the secondary hull. This I got to channeling pretty smoothly into the rest. I was pretty scared of this part, but it turned out to be not too bad. And this is blending in pretty nicely because, again, it's a separate piece, so I don't need to care about any geometry flowing with the rest of the model. And I very much fixed up this bottom. This was really bugging me right here. This indentation, it's always a trouble spot on these ships. But what I ended up doing was greatly reducing the amount of edges that come through here. There was a triangle in here and it was just a big mess. So I just ended up either moving them to just tighten up the edge here or deleting them. And it turned out to be pretty good because whenever you can get rid of edge loops, it usually means you can have a nice smooth mesh. So almost ready for the big moment. I know I'm probably hyping it up too much, but I sort of need to psych myself up to move on to the next phase of the project. But I'm going to keep doing more work and we'll get there soon. I'm getting really close to a point now where I'll be satisfied with freezing the subdivision on this. I've made a lot more improvements Notably in this area, previously there was a big crease running down this entire length, and that's not the way it looks on the model. So I just deleted some loops, and I moved some other ones out so it doesn't pinch so much. So that created a much smoother transition down this side of the engineering hull right here. Also, I just did some more rounding out. As you can see, I made it a bit more round 
it's not quite true to the plan anymore because I think on the physical model, it's actually a bit more rounded. So I rounded this out a bit more. And also what I did, it's very subtle, but I shortened these ridges. They're a little bit closer to the bottom of the saucer now because I, f I felt that this part was too tall, just looking at the references. And I even built this sort of window uh, buck in order to see the size. And it's, I think, much more true to the original model. So I got to make all these changes before I freeze the subdivision because then it's going to get extremely difficult. So I just got to make sure everything is in order before I take that big step. Starting to get down to the nitty gritty now. While I was looking at this impulse engine, I noticed that there's a strange slope. You can see it better with the edges. There's a strange slope going on right here. So I looked at the photo and it's supposed to be a nice smooth curve. So I took a closer look at the model. And sure enough, this is coming up too aggressively. It should be straight through all the way and that'll create a more realistic slope. So just got to change this. Hopefully this works. Just got to lower that. Crush fingers. There we go. So it's still not quite perfectly flat. I got to play around some stuff here. Maybe just start going like that. But as you can see, it's definitely a step in the right direction. It's also giving a little bit more leeway for the internals here. And I know I'm going to have to punch a hole through the saucer in order to make this, in order to make this impulse grill sit lower. As you can see in the photo, it's much deeper down. So getting close to the magic moment, but still more work to do. Okay, so I've taken a lot of time. I've looked over the model stem to stern. I'm not concerned with the nacelles at this point because it's a separate mesh. So I'm just going to leave this for now. But I do believe that the time has come to finally freeze this mesh and turn it into an editable poly so I can finally get to the fine details. I just need to resign myself to the fact that this probably isn't 100% screen accurate, but at some point you just got to let it go. At some point you just got to turn it on. So without further ado, here we go. Big drum roll. And collapse all. And yes, so it's an editable mesh. Just really quick, convert to editable poly. And now you see we can manipulate this on a much finer level. But I sacrificed in being able to manipulate it on the grander scale, such as all these big curves and everything. Now I can manipulate it on a finer level of detail. And that is, of course, going to include extruding these panels that you see here and cutting out the windows, making the lifeboats, and all that other stuff that goes into creating the fine detail of a Starship model. So I hope you continue to take this journey with me, and I'll see you soon.